Next to vitamin C, vitamin D is probably the most well-known vitamin out there. It exists naturally in foods, and in this video I want to talk about what vitamin D is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it. Which means we will talk about vitamin D supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what vitamin D is and why we need it. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin in a family of compounds that includes vitamins D1, D2, and D3. Unlike other vitamins, your body can actually produce vitamin D naturally when it's directly exposed to sunlight. But of course, you can also get vitamin D from certain foods and supplements. The current RDA for adult men and women is 50 microgram or 600 international units per day. It has several important functions in the body, the most important of which are first, regulating calcium absorption. Healthy vitamin D activity is required to absorb calcium from the gut into the bloodstream. In this sense, it is actually more of a hormone than a vitamin. Because active vitamin D not only helps to increase the amount of calcium your gut can absorb from eaten foods, but it also prevents calcium loss from the kidneys. On top of that, it is also important for the formation of new bone, both in children and adults. Next is immune function. In addition to calcium regulation, research suggests that vitamin D may also play a role in certain diseases, or better, the fight against them. For example, people with a vitamin D deficiency appear to be at a higher risk of infections and autoimmune diseases. Also, low vitamin D levels have been linked to increased risk of certain heart diseases, such as hypertension. However, please be careful before taking vitamin D supplements for both your immune system and hypertension. I will talk about why later. And lastly, mental well-being. Vitamin D might also play a big role in regulating mood and decreasing the risk of depression. I mean, this should be fairly obvious, as we all know how being in the sun can instantly boost your mood and will make you feel better. In turn, vitamin D deficiency has been linked to negative emotions and even anxiety or depression. Before I get to the big and complex topic of vitamin D supplements, let's first discuss the best natural vitamin D sources and foods. Like I said before, your skin can actually produce it. This happens when the sun's ultraviolet B, UVB rays, interact with a protein called 7-DHC in the skin, converting it into vitamin D. The lighter your skin, the more sensitive it will be to these UVB rays. Of course, you can also get vitamin D from foods. Here, the best sources are animal liver, fatty fish, and cod liver oil, as well as egg yolk. Fortified dairy products are also often listed as a good source. However, I'm personally not a big fan of those, but that's a topic for another video. Okay, on to the last part of this video, vitamin D supplementation. Over the last few years, vitamin D has become one of the most popular supplements out there. It has gone so far that websites and books have been created just about this one nutrient. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of misinformation and hype going on, which leads me to say that vitamin D is probably the most misunderstood nutrient slash hormone out there, and most people should actually avoid it as a supplement. I know this is probably not what you were expecting to hear, but please hear me out. My issue with most vitamin D supplements can be summarized within two sentences. One, most people don't know or understand the influence of vitamin D on other nutrients. And two, they assume that natural vitamin D and vitamin D supplements are the same thing when they really aren't. Let's talk about each issue separately. First, the influence of vitamin D on other nutrients. As you know from my other videos on vitamins, no nutrient should be viewed in isolation but instead always together with its synergists and antagonists, as well as cofactors, so all the nutrients it influences. In the case of vitamin D, there are a bunch of nutrient interactions that we need to look at. First, it depletes vitamin A, because they are direct antagonists in the liver. The more you take of one, the less you have of the other. Many people, especially people who eat little to no animal protein, already have low bioactive vitamin A in their bodies. Taking supplemental vitamin D will only further increase this deficiency. 
Next, vitamin D depletes magnesium. That's because magnesium is needed in almost every step of vitamin D synthesis and its conversion from storage to active. Magnesium deficiency is an even more widespread problem than vitamin A deficiency, and taking vitamin D supplements will just increase this issue. Lastly, vitamin D supplements appear to deplete potassium both from the blood and the tissue. While it is not clear whether this is directly from the increase in calcium absorption, remember that calcium is a potassium antagonist, or from the vitamin D itself, the result is the same. And since just like with magnesium, most people are already potassium deficient, the problem will only get worse if they take vitamin D. The second issue I have with vitamin D supplements is that most people assume they're the same thing as natural vitamin D when they really aren't. When your skin is exposed to the sun's ultraviolet rays, vitamin D3 sulfate, also known as colocalciferol sulfate, is produced. Contrary to what many people claim, this is not the same form as vitamin D found in supplements. The important difference is that supplemental vitamin D is not sulfated. Even though this difference isn't completely understood, some research have suggested that natural vitamin D sulfate has several benefits over normal D3 that is not sulfated. First, it is water-soluble, so it is able to travel freely in the bloodstream, whereas supplemental D3 is fat-soluble and requires other nutrients to become active. Second, the sulfated form, after offering its benefits in the body, drops the sulfate and then assists with calcium regulation. So basically, natural vitamin D versions offer the best of both worlds, whereas the supplemental version misses out on a lot of these benefits. Now, at this point, you're probably very confused and are asking yourself, if vitamin D supplements are so bad, why do so many studies report positive effects? One reason for this is that natural vitamin D studies are lumped together with supplement studies. For example, in one of the early studies on vitamin D's positive effect on immune system, which was conducted all the way back in 2006, the researchers used cod liver oil and sunlight instead of supplements. Same with hypertension, where sunlight seems to have a direct and positive influence, but the effect of supplementation isn't so clear. Also, like I said before, vitamin D definitely has a positive effect and fixing a deficiency will improve your health and well-being. The question is just how to increase your intake safely and without knocking other nutrients down. So what I generally recommend instead of blindly supplementing vitamin D, especially in very high doses, is to try to get more sun exposure first. If this isn't possible, either buy a vitamin D lamp or go with cod liver oil, which is high in natural vitamin D and also vitamin A. And also make sure to fix your vitamin D cofactor deficiencies such as magnesium and potassium. In many cases of chronically low vitamin D levels, a magnesium deficiency is the real problem, which the body doesn't want to lose more of, so it will also keep vitamin D low. Once you fix your magnesium deficiency, your vitamin D levels will go up naturally. Lastly, if you really want to supplement vitamin D, please do so carefully and with very small doses of 1000 IU per day or less. I know this goes against what many people preach online, but after this lesson, you should understand why I believe they are wrong. To wrap up this video and summarize the most important learnings, vitamin D is an important nutrient slash hormone, and our body needs it for calcium absorption, immune health, and mood regulation. However, natural vitamin D and vitamin D supplements are not the same and will have different effects on your body. Be careful when supplementing and as always, listen to your body and keep an eye on your other essential nutrients.